scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Listen to me. As I look at everyone here tonight, I'm not just seeing men. I'm seeing businesses. I'm seeing books. I'm seeing institutes. I'm seeing evangelists, I'm seeing anointings, I'm seeing mantles, I'm seeing graces. Can I tell you this? Hear me. Some of you, your grace to preach. Someday, when the generation of our fathers have gone, some of you who are seated there, you will be the one standing here. And you will, you will recap this thing. You will say, 30 years ago, when our fathers were still here please don't disappoint destiny through carelessness make up your mind that everything God gave me today Miles Munro has gone but some of us remain his students and extensions of his conviction is God speaking to someone I love the hymn that says, I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. Some of you don't remember those hymns again. The writers were people who wrote with understanding. What can I do? There is nobody seated under the sound of my voice who is empty. What do you have in your house? Second Kings 4. The woman said nothing except she did not know that what she ignored was what had the power to bail her out. Can I tell you this? Your reward in life will be based on your discovering, your developing and you're deploying your gift let me repeat your reward in life will come as a result of discovering developing and deploying your gifts I don't do ministry for money I don't do ministry for fame I don't do ministry for honor I don't do ministry for recognition I do ministry because I love Jesus and I found it as a divine mandate over my life. But I tell you sincerely, my dear people, most of what many, most of what people will look for in their lifetime in discovering, developing, and deploying the giftings of God, He has brought them to my life so cheaply that sometimes I wonder. I say, is it true that life can be this cheap? You don't know how cheap life can be till you are in the presence. Look, no matter how a fish tries to fly, it can't do well flying. There are dolphins that try to fly, but they go back as a reminder that you were designed for the sea. There are birds that try to step into the water. Can I tell you this? You are a master when you develop discover develop and deploy your gifting 
there are gentlemen handling this camera right now as anointed as you think i am it is not my place if i go and push this man and i say you don't know what the anointing can do and i hold that camera you may be annoyed by what you are seeing you see that because it is not a gift it is not an ability i've not invested in developing it and i'm not deploying it finding your gift is only one part of the equation listen to me there is a difference or there is a relationship between competence and confidence you will remain in shame for the rest of your life until you find something that stands you out listen end this journey of competition fighting getting angry there is no space for that kill that any space for those things in your life and fill it up with relevance that brands you by discovering your place you never see planes clashing in the air because of space traffic only happens on land but once you are in the air there is space for every plane no matter how big it is you never see traffic at sea like a big these giant ships that carry cars that have almost skyscrapers built in them and yet they move freely at sea can i tell you this there is a space for you let your gift take you there the bible says the gift of a man are you learning something tonight the gift of a man someone shout i am gifted let the devil hear it say i am gifted let your destiny hear it say i am gifted let your past hear it say i am gifted There is something I have that my world can celebrate Jesus for. Find your own. Many have found theirs and it took them from levels of shame and reproach to enviable destinies. Let me give you an assignment. Please, when you go back, go and write everything you know in your life that constitutes an advantage don't let anybody laugh at you no matter how stupid it sounds write it God you gave me long hair write it God you gave me an ability to talk once I open my mouth write it God you gave me this beautiful voice to sing write it God you gave me this grace this charisma for leadership every time i'm in the midst of people they seem to listen to me write it i will show you what you are doing is found in philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith it says are we together i want us to read it together philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the, if you can't find it let me just quote it that the communication of your faith it says may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus have you acknowledged the good things in you if they tell you you have a big head is that the only thing you have they must say the other ones you have too don't don't dwell in negative things and say oh I have a big head I am short I am tall let me tell you this focus anything you focus on grows and magnifies in your life you focus on failures you keep wishing things that will never be you be proud of being you this rod you have given me to the nations we go oh god i will take that rod of healing that rod of your word that rod of leadership that rod of creativity let me prophesy to someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god beginning from tonight may your rod begin to speak for you in your campus in your place of work may the rod the ability the gift the talent that god has put within your spirit receive grace to identify it receive grace to develop it and receive grace to deploy it hallelujah please sit down we're wrapping up you see in africa a man can be in his 20s and they may never allow him to develop his gift 
why they will say he's a child there is a wrong narrative you must change in africa you see people getting old and not blessing their world with any gift they say they are children you go to places like china and you will find young children who are barely teenagers 11 12 discovering things that are changing the world because the atmosphere allows for creativity don't be like jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 jeremiah said i am young verse 6 when he said rise from your mother's womb i call you and i ordain you to be a prophet to the nations jeremiah said ah lord behold i cannot speak for i am a child don't say i'm a child don't give god excuses when you read exodus chapter 4 at a point god became angry with moses because moses kept giving excuses lord i am a stammerer lord i am this and god said, who created the mouth he said keep quiet moses who knows moses would have received his healing but he did not believe that god could heal him and he said all right let aaron come and be your spokesman since you think that the mouth i gave you is useless can i tell you every time you ignore what god has given you god will transfer that grace to someone else who can appreciate it it's true go and read your bible matthew 26 the parable of the talents see what happened to the man who ignored his own talent when he brought it he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow. look at what you gave me and he said no problem give it to me he took it to the man who identified it there is nothing god gave me that will not be used to bless my world if he gave me a voice to sing i will sing if he gave me a brain to think i will think if he gave me a lips to declare his grace i will declare it. if he gave me an anointing to heal I will heal every sick person I find. If he gave me a grace to cast out devils, I will cast out every devil I find. Everything you have given me, oh God, let it be used for your glory. Is someone learning tonight? Question one, who am I? Question two, where am I from? Question three, why am I here? Question four, what can I do? Question five. Where am I going? The fifth and the last question you must answer is a question about your destination both here and when this life is over. It's the fifth question that any man who wants to live a life of meaning and purpose and relevance must answer. 1 Corinthians 15 19 please write it down 1 Corinthians 15 19 let's read together if we can see it ready one to read if in this life only we have hope in Christ he said we are of all men most miserable that means in all of your voyage you come to a point where you realize that someday this life will be over no matter how young you think you are no matter how old you think you are even the baby that was born today will get to a point where their lives and their destinies wrap up whether it is the day that you see him or the day he sees you the day both of you meet that is the end of your chapter here all my days on earth I will await The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul sin my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come 
So who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless war. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. You are closer to your, the end of your day now than you were when you woke up this morning. You may not like to hear what I'm saying, but it's the truth. Whether you like it or not. For every time you celebrate your birthday, realize that you're celebrating two things. Number one, you are celebrating the reason for which you were born not just the day you were born you are celebrating the reason for which you were born number two you are acknowledging the fact that time is going celebration of birthday is an acknowledgement that i do not have forever on this earth can i tell you it is my desire and my prayer for you that by the time he calls you will not go in shame and pain and start giving excuses and say god but i did not finish this till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ can I tell you this we're about to pray everyone please listen to me very carefully everybody who is gone today was once in someone else's funeral everybody who is dead today once stood before a dead body can i tell you this by reason of the work that god has called me to do i have seen many funerals in my life i have seen people that i love i get news about someone's transition an average of every day because usually when people die they reach me in hope that maybe let's see if we can pray for the person to come back. So I get text messages. A prominent man in this nation who was just appointed not too long, just passed on to glory. And I remember my phone text messages, please let's pray for this person. Can I tell you this? Every one of you, including the person talking, if Christ tarries one day, this life listen carefully only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time when it's all be said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you lose our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone Listen There are many who have gone before us 
some of them started this year with us in fact some of them were alive last week as at last week if i preach this message they would think they still had 30 years not knowing they had seven days left only god knows how many days we have ours is to continue to declare long life so that we can serve his purposes but i repeat that song again till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ I now listen carefully for those who have answered this question you don't fear death you will live long ago don't worry don't be afraid but the reason is not because of fear the reason is because you need time for your assignment you must get to a point in your life where like paul you can say for me to live is christ but to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord i came here tonight as led by the spirit of god to ask you these five questions we're about to pray listen for some of you question five god asked certain people question five at the start of this year they refuse to answer now it's too late now hear me please what i forgot to tell you is that all these five questions you cannot answer them when you are gone you are only given a chance to answer them within the frame of your lifetime i bring you good news i hope it does not sound like bad news the time is ticking you would have answered these questions last year but you ignored it his majesty has brought me again to ask you one more time question one have you found who you are in christ question two have you recognized your source have you recognized your connection question three what's question three where are you from and why are you here please go back and ask that question why am i here i'm not just here to escort others clapping for people while they are making it question four what do i have or what can i do what can i do I may not be able to do everything is not needed but the one thing that God has mandated me to do can I tell you this I vowed a vow with my life that as far as it depends on me I don't claim to know everything I don't claim I can do everything yes in Christ but as far as destiny is concerned I have my allocation I vowed a vow that I would not fail my generation can I tell you this you are listening to me today because many years ago I was intentional about my life I made up my mind that I was not going to waste my time roaming around earth stop wasting your time in jealousy in bitterness in competition and begin to focus on the matters of destiny and don't let the devil lie to you that you are small don't let the devil lie to you that you are young We'll sing one more hymn and then we'll stand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. You know that hymn? Ye soldiers of the cross, lift up his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every foe is
is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Two prayer points. I'm going to leave you for the next two minutes. Our time is gone. I don't know how you are going to cry before your God of heaven. Forget about whether I'm a preacher, I'm a student fellowship president. Throw that one behind. Cry for your destiny in the next two or three minutes. Cry for your destiny. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Answer these questions in prayer. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Let mercy find me tonight, O God. Someone is praying. Shabaka toska teleketa. Braga toska dila ketebasiata. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? And more importantly, where am I going when this life is over? Five questions you must ask and you must answer to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose. One more minute. Cry before the God of heaven. Shateke parakoshka libran negetes. Empra kateke te pakata pranda katos kati palatos. Someone is praying. As you pray, remember your generation. They are looking up to you. As you are praying, may God open your eyes to see the crusade crowd that is waiting for you when you develop that gifting of God. See the hospitals that you will build as a result of living a purposeful life. See the lives that will say thank you that you were born. seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us Here for you, come and do what you do. We are here for you, come and lift the way that you lift. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. This is a move. This is the future of four square. Praying and remaining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and I speak over your life. Father, I receive the grace not to fail my generation. 
I receive that grace. Whatever it will take, I obtain grace. I obtain grace. If it takes prayer, I will pray. If it takes fasting, I will fast. If it takes studying the word, I will study. Lord, I will not fail my generation in business, in politics, in ministry, in family. Keep praying, you have one more minute. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please do not forget what you learned tonight. Go and listen to this teaching again and answer these five questions like a student would answer an exam. Because if you fail this exam, it's not just a carryover you will have. If you fail this exam, it can cost you your life and your relevance. Let me repeat the question one last time. Number one, who am I? A question of your identity. Number two, where am I from? A question of your source and your connection and your allegiance. Question three, why am I here? A question of purpose, finding your place in life. Question four, what can I do? identifying developing and deploying your gifts your potentials and number five where am i going to when this life is over let me remind you of the assignment i gave you when you go back home tonight go and write it lord what is my place in destiny reveal to me and write everything that constitutes an advantage in your life start developing it developing it by buying relevant materials developing it by develop it by read reading the books and listening to relevant teachings that relate to that area of gifting and i can assure you you're on your way hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.